Thank you very much. And a very warm welcome to uh, the audience. Audience sitting here, audience watching us virtually. Uh, this is, I'll say, this is one of the biggest FinTech Fest I have attended. And the topic for the discussion what we have today in the master class is New Age Credit Products for MSME. As it is known, MSMEs are the growth engine for Indian economy. You know, if I summarize MSME, the size, the sheer size of MSMEs in one slide, so uh, there are around 64 million MSMEs across the country. You know, and it is creating 11.10 jobs. So every one out of eight employable youth in this country is employed in MSME. So how strong, how big MSME is? It is creating, it is 50% of Indian export is by MSMEs. And you know the big, the big, big pie, the big apple. Thirty percent of total uh, contribution in GDP is by MSMEs. So it is very clear that MSME, in the, the journey of reaching five trillion economy for Indian economy, MSME is the growth engine. MSME will give boost to our economy. So these are. So let me define how MSMEs are. There are typically three kind of MSMEs. One is small, micro, and medium. If I talk about the turnover, so up to 5 crore is micro, up to 50 crore is small, and up to 250 crore is medium enterprises. But you know the most interesting part is, out of the entire pie of MSMEs, micro contributes to around 99.47%. The majority of are in ma nano and mini sector. So whatever solution we are making, whatever solution is created by the ecosystem should cater to micro MSMEs. Now, next slide. If I divide these MSMEs into three parts in terms of activities, so around 34% are in manufacturing, around 36% are in trade activities, and rest are in other services. And you know, this is also a very important pie. India majority of Indians we stay in rural areas so if we want this country to develop we have to bring the development to the rural part of India for 51 percent of MSMEs are in rural India creating a lot of employment creating infrastructure in our villages and another very important point out of the entire MSME universe 96 percent of MSMEs are proprietorship concerned so whatever solution again the stakeholders are making, whatever, whatever solution fintechs are making, whatever solution banks are making and whatever we at NPC are doing, we have to find a concern, find a solution for proprietorship. Now this unmet credit demand. So you know just like fuel is very important for your car, just like electricity is very important to run any of your appliances in your home, similarly credit is very important for MSME. And presently there are, on, so if you, there are 45 lakh crore credit is required for this particular sector. And if I divide into two parts, formal credit is around 55% which is around 25 lakh crore and informal credit is 45% which is again 20 lakh crore. But there is a catch. If you see the formal credit, business loan only contributes to 15 lakh crore and the rest is personal loan which is around 10 lakh crore. And an informal sector, so basically what informal credit is, when a MSME takes loan from, from friends or maybe from money lenders, something which is not formal in nature. The, you know, the credit rates are very high in this segment. So 80%, in fact, you know, 80% of total MSMEs, around 50.4 million MSMEs are taking the credit from informal sector. So it is a very, very huge pie to cover. And just imagine if all of us, the entire ecosystem, reaches out to 50 million and every MSME at least provides two employment, two generates employment for two people, you will create 100 million new jobs. So this is something, you know, again I will say that in if we want to, from a developing country to a developed country, we want to change the scenario how this country is running, we need to create jobs in MSME. Now the second part is digitization. So in fact I was talking the other day, there are a lot of contribution by India for the world. We created Zero, we created Ay Ayurveda, but in this century we are giving a gift of digital payment to the world. So okay, talking on that, so on the supply side of it, a lot of these MSMEs are now registered on these portals which are, which are Urals of the nature and all of these B2B portals. More than 50% are registered for supply on these portals. 75% and you know this is also a revolution. 
uh, internet is cheaper if you compare it with any other part of the world internet charges are very is cheap in india so 70% or 75% of msmes they say that the connectivity is very good which is which is the important aspect for your digital payments your digital ecosystem and more than 27 percent people are now selling on online platforms if i compare the percentage share of msme across the years uh, in 21 in 2021 it is around 27 percent of the total sale is done online now the catalyst of digitization of msmes there are some of the very important points let me start with digit digital payments uh, we know upi itself handled around 6.8 billion USD transactions last month. We have other ways of digital payments as well. So as I said, digital payment is gift to the world from India. So this is a very strong aspect and this will help MSMEs to grow. Second is custom and tax policy. Government is also working to a very large extent to digitize the entire program, to digitize and make it easy for MSMEs to file taxes, to file GST returns and all of that. ONDC and market place operators, ONDC, Open Network for Digital Commerce. ONDC will be like a UPI mo moment for e-commerce. It is an open network where anybody can log in, anybody can place their product for, for, to sell. So this will create a new revolution for MSMEs per se. Digital awareness and customer trust. In NPCI we have a program called DigiSati, where there is, if there is any doubt related to any of the digital products, the question comes to us and we answer it. Similarly, there are various other mechanisms in where government and various government aided organizations are working in the direction of creating awareness for digital payments. Logistics. See, everything is else is digital, but at the end of the day, you need to bring the goods at the doorstep of the customer, at the doorstep of these enterprises. So government is doing, so we have huge roadways, we have now huge expressway. Delhi Bombay corridor will be the largest in the world. So the road transport, the revolution in road and logistics will definitely help MSMEs in a longer way. And all of that put together, all of that put together is leading access to easy credit for our MSMEs. So taking the slide further, my colleague Ashish will take further slides. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, uh, for giving us the industry overview. Uh, good morning, everyone, once again, and taking over the presentation from here. So, NPCI has always been designing solutions for uh, addressing the digital payments and various other uh, payment networks. Uh, just looking at some of the products that are being used by our MSMEs uh, for uh, for the digital payments. If you look at the customer to business payments, we have Rupay, IMPS, uh, uh, Beam, APS and other payment solutions. Uh, for the B2B payments, uh, we have Rupay, Beam, Nash and basically all the uh, payment instruments which are assess, uh, helping in uh, business to business payments. For P2P remittances, we have Beam, UPI, IMPS and other, other payment uh, instruments. For B2C, uh, for salaries, we have Nash and obviously we can use other uh, applications like UPI and Beam for the same as well. But uh, for, as Abhishek has already pointed out that there is a credit uh, demand and that can easily be met by digital means only. The traditional way of credit will never be uh, scalable enough to meet that uh, huge 45% of the informal credit demand. So why a credit card as a payment solution is good for this uh, good for addressing this problem is first of all the short term credit needs so a credit uh, according to one of the surveys it was found that uh, around 60% of the msmes have received payments between somewhere between 40 to 60 days so in that uh, particular uh, uh, you know in particular interval they would require some uh, working capital for short term credit needs and i think uh, credit card without incurring a uh, huge amount of uh, uh, you know charges it's a best best way of supplying for their working capital uh, no extra charges. When I say no extra charges, it means that a credit free period of around 40 to 50 days would be a kind of very feasible for every MSME to use that money for their working capital requirement till they get payments from their suppliers. And obviously government is also uh, helping by making certain regulations uh, for entities to give back the money in 45 days. 
Uh, credit card also helps in ease in expense managing and monitoring. You do all your expenses with credit card and at the end in, on the due date you get a, you know, a statement in the uh, tracking of whatever expenses you did. So the basic features of a credit card as a payment instrument is basically helping and obviously it creates a digital footprint and enhances your credit score which thereby help you in getting more and more loans at a very cheaper rate. Uh, Rupee already uh, uh, has this. Uh, Rupee has this initial responsibility of addressing the backbone of our economy, and thereby we designed a Rupee MSME credit card with some basic features. Uh, the broad features we start with, we had certain insurance coverages which are basically useful for this sector such as accident, air accident and baggage loss coverage. Then we also offer concierge and lounge access on this card. Uh, we, for creating a kind of a personalization, we also increase that the Udyam number should be embossed on the card uh, for that particular MSME. Udyam number is compulsory now for every MSME to have this. And we have a bouquet of uh, offers that that are basically incentivizing MSMEs in their digital journey. So just looking at the broad uh, incentives that we are providing, uh, we have offers and incentives on email solutions, cloud platforms, digital marketing platforms and CA assisted services. We got into the shoes of the MSMEs and thought that where, wherever we can go ahead and incentivize for these uh, businesses to take the digital modes of doing payments as well as enhancing their business. So we got uh, certain offers on the part and we have some uh, incentives and offers on the couriers, legal, monthly rentals co-working spaces and travel and hospitality. So this is our way of doing, uh, incentivizing the MSMEs to basically uh, move on to their digital modes of uh, doing business. So uh, what we are doing with the acceptance part, so when we say that 51% of the MSMEs are in the rural areas, the acceptance via traditional methods of a POS machine or you know an e-com payment gateway is not feasible. So. Uh, having said that, uh, Rupee Cards has around 6.5 million POS machines which are enabled for acceptance uh, throughout the country. We have acceptance on major e-com merchants uh, throughout the, throughout the, nationally and internationally and we are working to enhance the same. But this Rupee Credit Card on UPI, uh, by doing this, uh, we can take acceptance to villages, we can ex take acceptance to Tier 2, Tier 3 city, and uh, which was not possible before. And uh, you know, by doing this, and we are enhancing the scope of acceptance to around 20 crore merchant QR codes. And basically, these uh, MSMEs, which have a huge amount of customers which are not having card acceptance payment infrastructure, can enjoy the feasibility of a UPI and take can take credit and interest free period of the credit card instrument. So this combination has huge potential, but I will not be talking much on the same because we have a master class tomorrow as well on this. Uh, vendor payment solutions, uh, we will be launching this solution uh, in, the in the next month. We have co-created this product uh, along with one of our very good partners and uh, what exactly is vendor payment solution is, suppose you have a supplier who doesn't accept cards. Uh, through this solution, you can pay to the window, uh, to the solution provider via credit card and the amount will be disbursed according to your payment instruction to all the suppliers at once directly into their bank accounts. So that is how it works and we will be launching it in the next month for this. So see, uh, the point that we got, the feedback that we got from the market is you issue card but where it will be used and I think by enhancing by Rupee credit card on UPI and this vendor payment solution, the acceptance problem is almost solved. So talking about the basic benefits, you do all your payments through a Rupee MSME credit card and you get a single monthly statement. So basic, basic advantage of a credit card, uh, a credit card instrument for MSMEs. Uh, interest fee period, I have already said that it allows for extension of your accounts payable and basically you can pay to your supplier and get early payment discount which is the savings of the supplier point and without compromising with your working capital or your cash flows. So that really fits directly into, into, into the advantages and directly fits into the working nature of the MSMEs. 
you have better spend traceability because it offers the credit card offers you the insights on transaction data and the payments made so basically you can analyze your business and you can see where are the payments going and you can definitely use a monthly statement to see that spend efficient the banks have this uh, you know apprehension that it will not be used for business purposes but certain mccs which are definitely not required for businesses can be blocked by the banks and thereby it enhances in some way of other usage of the card on business uh, offer business requirements only we as i already mentioned that we have certain offers and platforms that basically helps in incentivizing the msmes to take digital modes of uh, doing uh, their businesses and we obviously a digital footprint is created which is basically used by the banks and various other uh, institutions to lend credit so what we are trying to do here uh, the big picture that we are seeing uh, few years back uh, the strong government regulation regarding gst and getting registered and taking gst number and online gst filing made most of the msmes to come on the uh, you know formal system okay because of that because of the formalization along with the digitalization it created a, a sizable digital footprint for example online gst filings and you know gst saha is also coming which basically use your gst data to lend you so basically that was the uh, uh, idea behind this then because a digital footprint is created it enabled access to easier and cheaper credit Uh, because of the basically the data and here is wh where we want to get into an msme credit card will increase the credit score and digital footprint of the msme thereby making them eligible for more credit at a better rate uh, it should be the first step to create your digital footprint and your digital history which can be used by any of the financing institutions and basically used for assessing your capability of taking credit and banks will have been having more visibility on the fund utilization at a minimal risk they can easily detect early npas and obviously if you have a better uh, you know a better uh, history of credit you can get cost you can be costed other loan products and extend more credit can be extended and because all these advantages will be seen by the msmes more and more msmes will formalize and digitize as they realize the benefit so basically according to one of the surveys easier and cheaper access to finance would start this virtuous cycle and uh, it is estimated that around 85% of the msmes would uh, go into formalization by the end of 2023 uh the support that the ecosystem we require from the ecosystem and the way forward of taking this is first of all we need to have separate underwriting mechanism from the bank side if the banks cannot depend on the traditional underwriting mechanism they have to use alternate data for assessing msmes especially new to credit msmes which are uh, which are taking loans or credit for the first time uh banks have this problem of collection uh, so there has to be use of technology for reduction in the collection cost of the money that has been lended uh one thing that i suggest i would uh, like to highlight here that there should be some kind of a credit guarantee provided to the new to credit msme customers by the uh, by the government a policy level change is required or you can say that the credit guarantee scheme can be extended for first time uh, credit card holders in this sector and because when it reduces the risk uh, the banks would be more happy to lend it to the uh, msmes and thereby uh, see their behavior and lend more and obviously a financial literacy and awareness program has to be taken on the national level to uh, educate everybody regarding the government schemes and regarding the benefits of a digital payment platform so uh, npci would uh, npci is working constantly to you know uh, provide payment solution to this sector and thereby we invite all the fintechs all the banks and all the financial institutions to come and collaborate with us in creating uh, a, a good payment eco payment uh, solution for this particular sector and by that i would like to end my ppt and we are open for questions thank you anybody i'm surprised we don't have any question yeah looks like we are, we are mostly of most of us are from npci only here right no questions anything you want to ask
I appreciate Ashish. Uh, this was nicely done. Fun. So my question is, uh, while we are catering to the SME segment, and the intent is to make working working capital cheaper, and also we are getting qualified in, in the product construct. What is the interchange? Is it going to be the same, or are we looking at a you know, lower interchange for the supplier to give it to its customers? Uh, so, very interesting question. In fact, uh, you know, when we were making this product, when we were working on the mechanism of MSME credit cards, uh, we, we know how a credit, so MDR, interchange are a very important aspect of any credit card. But way a normal credit card works, for MSME it has to be different. You know, because we have to match the cost of fund, we have to match the funds at what these MSMEs are borrowing in the, from the market, from the banks. And secondly, for the supplier side, so buying the, uh, so it has to be prudent in that case also. So yes, uh, on your questions, in on your question, we are working on a differential interchange. Uh, that's like in the making. So we are working on a differential interchange so that it benefits the entire ecosystem. Uh, so yes, we are working on that direction where there will be a differential interchange for MSMEs. This particular card. I'm assuming it's lesser than the market, right? So it has to be close to the cost of fund for any of the MSMEs. So adding to that, I think uh, if you see the rates that are, uh, the loan that are given on, uh, to the MSMEs by NBFCs or some private banks also, it ranges somewhere from 14 to 20% a year. And if you go to the informal money lenders, it ranges from 20 to 30%. So definitely it will be lesser on a lesser side, but yeah, I think we will reveal that through a circular. It's a commercial product. So the entire ecosystem, uh, it's, it's, it's a product which every ecosystem should make money out of it, right? So yes, it will be revealed very soon, but it will be lesser than what it is. Yeah. Any other further questions? Uh, first of all, very good presentation. The question that I had, as I've rightly mentioned, that 51% of MSME population resides in rural India. And this being a very good opportunity for MSMEs, you know, to lend money. Um, you did speak about Digi Sati being one forum where you know, awareness could be increased. Can you just specify or you know, throw some light on other initiatives that come to your mind that you would be working on in the near future to you know, educate and create awareness amongst the rural population specifically? So in fact, uh, a lot of these government agencies and a lot of our private ecosystem partners, uh, they have created a campaign on YouTube. So you go on YouTube, there are a lot of campaigns. In fact, recently there was a campaign by WhatsApp also. So similarly, we are also doing a lot of campaigns on YouTube and Digi Sati, as I said, there is one initiative uh, which is basically to cater to all the queries and questions related to digital payments in India. Uh, if I talk about other ways wherein uh, government, government aided agencies, private uh, partners, banks, the entire ecosystem. So there are various means, for example, I was talking to one of the largest uh, 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 government organization and they are working directly with MSMEs and so they have a lot of DFOs wherein they work at the interiors of the country and they are providing solution, they are providing education to the smallest of the entrepreneurs at the tier 3 cities and the rural areas. So and you know the best part is language barriers are getting broken. So instead of giving everything in English, we are creating a, 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 a system wherein they get the information in their own language. So that is how the entire ecosystem is working. Because I agree, you know, we have, the solution should be in their own language. The solution should be at their place. The solution should be at their time, right? So yes, the entire ecosystem is working on it, including NPCI. And uh, there's a lot of awareness which is being created uh, for such information. Thanks. Hi, Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so I have a question for you. I would call it a financial inclusive product as it is going to give credit access to 99% of the MSME which you mentioned. So you talked about uh, alternative digital uh, underwriting methods. So do we have any good practice which we can share with our uh, ecosystem players which they can follow because they do not have any civil score which is the primary uh, eligibility criteria. So what should be these uh, alternative uh, alter underwriting methods or sure. parameters? So, so I think uh, right now if somebody goes for an MSME loan, they basically use their 
you know business transactions that they have done uh, to uh, estimate what is exactly is their sales and everything so when you say alternate alternate uh, underwriting or under alternate data for underwriting it's anything anything and everything that is not in the traditional direction is something it, that is included it's just basically a word which has uh, different meanings for different issuers so i was talking to one of the credit rating agencies and they were using uh, basically uh, any any of the so suppose there is a qr code uh, that is placed that is used by that particular uh, msme uh, and sometimes the proprietors are there so they use the qr code so the qr code has this data of basically how many transactions are being done on a particular day and what exactly is their turnover which even that particular msme or that particular proprietor would not know so that kind of a data if it's collated and provided uh, insightful collation of that is there and provided to the banks i think that would serve as an alternate underwriting data there so it's just one of the examples there are people who are using even social media data to underwrite customers so th that's huge i mean it cannot be summarized in a particular definition for that is there any uh, bank which is following these uh, methods to underwrite so i i don't have any idea about so that as of mm -hmm. now banks you know so i divide it into two parts so banks and fintech players new age fintech players and banks so uh, yes, new age fintech players they are now employing new mechanism for underwriting, and in fact banks are also moving into that direction. But but uh, presently, if I talk about today, so all your new new age fintech partners they are working in MSME lending, so they are employing new age tools also. So I'm sure the entire ecosystem will also grow eventually, and uh, the present risk modeling I feel is. It's outdated. We need to create something new. We need to have various other parameters also to be included for underwriting. So risk modeling, risk modeling needs a new version. We need a risk modeling 2.0, especially for MSMEs. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, it's a wrap. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much for the audience present uh, here in the auditorium.